I always worry about people who say, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this for 10 years. I really don't like it very well. And then I'll do 10 more years of this. And rest. I mean, that's a little like saving up sex for your old age. You can choose what kind of a person you can be. Why not be the person you admire rather than the person you can't stand? It's so simple. You will move in the direction of the people that you associate with. Wanna soar? Get a mentor. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Warren Buffett, and some of his best life-changing advice. Mentor me, Warren. Also, if you wanna know what Warren and other successful entrepreneurs have to say about building unstoppable confidence, check out my 254 Confidence Series, where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you a morning video for free to help you build your confidence. The link to join is in the description below. It's important to associate with people that are better than yourself. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, do what you love. I was wondering how you define success personally. Well, I I can certainly define happiness because that's what that's what I am. I mean, I, I and, and if that if that, <laughs> I mean, I get to do what I like to do every single day of the year, and I get to do it with people I like, and I get to the, I get to I don't have to associate with anybody. Causes my stomach to churn. At, uh, uh, and uh, the only thing in my job I don't like, and this only happens about every three or four years, occasionally I have to fire somebody, and I don't like, that's the only thing. Other than, I, I tap dance to work, and I get down there, and I think I'm supposed to lie on my back and paint the ceiling, you know, or something like my <laughs> so, I mean, it, that's the way I feel, and, I, and, and it, 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 it doesn't diminish. It, it's, it's tremendous fun, so, uh, you know, if uh, uh, they say that uh, uh, success is... Uh, 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 getting what you want and happiness is wanting what you get. Well, I don't know which one uh, applies in this case, but I, I do know that I, I wouldn't be doing anything else. I mean, it, uh, uh, I do advise you, you know, in, when you go out to work, go to, go to work for an organization that you admire, people you admire, because it'll, it'll, it'll turn you on, and, and, and uh, uh, you, you ought to be happy where you are working. And I always worry about people who say, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this for 10 years, I really don't like it very well, and I'll do 10 more years of this. And rest. I mean, that's a little like saving up sex for your old age. I mean, <laughs> not, not, not a very good idea. <laughs> so get right in. So you get, would recommend that. Get right, get, right into, <laughs> get right into what you enjoy, you know, and, and, uh, <laughs> and you'll be successful at it. You really will. I mean, you, you won't be able to miss. And, uh, um, you know, that's... Uh, uh, I don't regard what I do as the most important thing in the world at all, but it's right for me. I mean, I happen to be wired in a certain way that what I do works in this. If I had to do what, you know, Bill does, I mean, <laughs> it lasts about 10 minutes. And uh, uh, that's true of a lot of things, but I, luckily I kind of stumbled into the thing that I, I, I do best, and, and that, you know, that, it's worked out well. Rule number two, be the person you want to be. If you look around you at the people you admire, you know, they have certain qualities. I mean, you've got, you've got friends, why do you like them? You know, generally, you know, they, 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 generally they have an upbeat attitude on life. Generally, they are generous people. They're humorous people. They're people that do more than their share. They're people that are thinking about something nice they can do for you. And all of those qualities attract you. And none of those are, are innate at birth. I mean, you, you can acquire those. And then there's other people that turn you off, you know, and, and, uh, uh, they have habits, they take credit for things they didn't do, they don't show up on time, whatever it may be. They're a little dishonest about things. And if you're looking at your life at, at a young age like you are, and you can choose what kind of a person you can be, why not be the person you admire rather than the person you can't stand? It's so simple. So just write down the qualities you like. Take your, take your five best friends. Why do you like them? And just write down those qualities. And you will find there's no quality there that you can't have yourself. And similarly with the five people you can't stand to be around, <laughs> put, those, put those things down that turn you off about those people. And if they turn you off about them, why should you possess them? You're gonna, uh, it's, it's so simple. Uh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not like some, something complicated that you think you should be learning <laughs> with an advanced degree in school. It's not as complicated as investing in the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's... It's enormously important to have people work with you in life. Right. They're going to work with you in life if they like you. 
you know, and they may occasionally, I mean, if you're in the army or something, you know, you may work for somebody that you don't like, but by and large, you're gonna get the best out of people if they feel good about you. And it's just so easy, but you've gotta develop the habits early because you can't say I'm gonna suddenly become a terribly attractive person when I'm 60, <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, so pick up the right habits now. And I will guarantee you, if you actually just write down those qualities and think about it, you will find you can have every one of the attractive qualities, get rid of the ones that are, are negative, that's and your life will be different. Rule number three, don't care what others think. It never bothered me if people disagreed with what I thought, uh, as long as I felt I knew the facts. I mean, I, there's a whole bunch of things I don't know to think about. I just stay away from those. Uh, so I stay within what I call my circle of competence. You know, it, it, uh, and Tom Watson said it best. He said, you know, he said, he said, I'm no genius, but I'm smart in spots, and I stay around those spots. Well, I try and stay around those spots, and I. I just don't have a, a problem if, if, uh, if somebody says, you know, you're wrong on something. I, just, I go back and look at the facts, and, and, and it, I, think that, I think that really is much more important, frankly, than, than having a few points of IQ or, or having an extra course or two in, in school or anything of the sort. You need emotional stability. Rule number four, surround yourself with great people. You will move in the direction of the people that you associate with. So I. It's important to associate with people that are better than yourself, and actually the most important decision many of you make, not all of you, will be the spouse you choose. Right. And uh, you really, you want to associate with people who are the kind of person you'd like to be. You'll, you'll move in that direction, and the most important person by far in that respect is your spouse. I, I can't overemphasize how important that is, and you're right. The, the friends you have, uh, they will form you as you go through life and uh, uh, make some good friends, keep them for the rest of your life, but have them be people that you admire as well as like them. Rule number five, read. I should mention one thing about reading. Uh, it was at the library here at Columbia. Yeah. That I wish I spent probably more time than any other uh, student. Uh, I, I, I lived there practically, but and I pulled the book out there happened to be who's in America, and it told me something about my professor, Benjamin Graham, and then I looked up, and I went to the library, and I said, I want to look more, learn more about this, because I learned this over here. Mm. That changed my whole life. You know, we own Geico now, <laughs> uh, because of, uh, of that librarian directing me to some other book, and then following through on that. Mm. It's the chance, I, I, I read about one-fifth the pace the bill does, but I still spend five or six hours a day reading. I mean, it just, you can learn so much. I particularly love biography. Just, uh, you know, to be able to live the lives of these people that have been so, mm -hmm. see them so extraordinary, the lessons and the, you know, the discouragements they face, just everything about it. So I just, I, you can't get enough of reading. And rule number six, the last one before a very special bonus clip is learn from mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. The biggest mistake, in, uh, well, not the biggest, necessarily the biggest, but, but buying Berkshire Hathaway itself was a mistake because Berkshire was a lousy textile business. And I bought it very cheap. I'd been taught by Ben Graham to buy things on a quantitative basis, look around for things that are cheap. And that I was taught that, we'll say, in 1949 or 50. It made a big impression on me. So I went around looking for what I call use cigar butts of stocks. And the cigar butt approach to buying stocks is that you walk down the street and you're looking around for cigar butts and you find this, on the street, this terrible looking, soggy, ugly looking cigar, one puff left in it. But you pick it up and you get your one puff. It's disgusting, you throw it away, but it's free. I mean, it's cheap. And then you look around for another soggy, you know, one puff cigar. Well, that's what I did for years. It's a mistake. Uh, although, you can make money doing it, but you can't make it with big money. It's so much easier just to, to buy wonderful businesses. So now I would rather buy a wonderful business at a fair price than a fair business at a wonderful price. But in those days, I was buying cheap stocks. And Berkshire was selling below its working capital per share. You got the plants for nothing. You got the machinery for nothing. You got the inventory and receivables at a discount. It was cheap. So I bought it. And 20 years later, I was still running a lousy business, and that money did not compound. You really want to be in a wonderful business, because the time is the friend of the wonderful business. You keep compounding, it keeps doing more business, and you keep making more money. 
Time is the enemy of the lousy business. I could have sold Berkshire, perhaps liquidated it, and made a quick little profit, you know, one puff. But staying with those kind of businesses is, is, is a big mistake. So you might say I learned something out of that mistake, and I would have been way better off taking what I did with Berkshire is I kept buying better businesses. I started the insurance business, C's Candy, the Buffalo, all, all kinds of things. I would have been way better doing that with a, with a brand new little entity that I'd set up rather than using Berkshire as the platform. Now I've had a lot of fun out of it. I mean, everything in life seems to turn out for the better, so I, I, I don't have any complaints about that, but it was a dumb thing to do. I went into US Air, I bought a preferred stock in 1989 uh, as soon as my check cleared, the company went into the red and never got out. I mean, it was a, a really dumb. I mean, it, it, um, I've got an 800 number I call now whenever I think about buying an air, airline stock. I call them up any hour that, fortunately, I can call them at 3 in the morning, and I just dial and I say, my name's Warren, I'm an aeroholic, you know, and I'm thinking about buying this thing, and then they talk me down. I mean, it takes hours. <laughs> It takes, takes hours sometimes, but it's worth it, believe me. Uh, if you ever think about that airline, buying an airline stock, call me and I'll give you the 800 number, because you, know, you don't want to do it. Uh, but we got lucky in terms of how we eventually came out on it. But it was a dumb, dumb decision. Now I've got a really special bonus clip from Warren on how to have the right heroes that I think you're gonna really enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to actually taking action in your life or your business. And if you're feeling bold, leave your answers in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one, what's the biggest lesson that you have learned from your mistakes? Number two, how can you read more to make that lesson more powerful? And number three, who do you need to surround yourself with so that lesson really sticks? If you tell me who your heroes are, I can tell you how you're gonna turn out to quite an extent uh, by this point in life. And, and I, I, I have been extraordinarily lucky and that none of my heroes ever let me down. I mean, I, the ones I uh, came up with uh, throughout their lives, uh, I've never felt that I've been let down in any way with it. Number one was my dad, and, and uh, uh, had a huge impression on me. Uh, um, my wife, who is here, is, is one of my heroes. I mean, she is, uh, you know, in, in terms of, of uh, she's taught me a tremendous amount, and, and, and uh, never seen anybody any better with human beings than, than, than she is. And uh, uh, you can, you know, Yogi Bear again said, you can, you can observe a lot just by watching. And uh, <laughs> I, I uh, you know, I, I watched my dad, and I, I've watched her, and uh, I had a, a professor, Ben Graham, uh, back at Columbia, and had a huge impact on me. So I have been lucky in that I've had terrific heroes, and they, they haven't let me down. And, and uh, uh, that, that takes you a long, long way. I, I've gone through one or two periods where we're kind of tough in life, but uh, not, any, I mean, every, everybody's had, had that, but, but having the right heroes will take you right through it. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word, this is all you need to be happy. It's the most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. If you want more Warren, check out the investment and advice strategy video I made. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. And then you always want to be sure you have enough. I mean, <laughs> it's like oxygen. You want to be sure it's around, you know, but you don't need to have, you don't need to have excessive amounts of it around.